I'll be changing up the format a bit today as we take a deep dive into the mystery of the mining of Lapu Lapu Ridge. So, I was browsing Reddit's our conspiracy subreddit, as you do, when I came across this post with over 3,000 upvotes in Reddit gold. The mystery of Lapu Lapu Ridge. Deep down under the Pacific Ocean, there is an enormous mobile underwater city. It has been operating there for centuries, millennia. It leaves tracks and debris all over the ocean floor as it mines the murky depths of the Mariana Trench. Scrolling through the post, I was pleased to see a geology-based conspiracy. I don't see many of those. At the end of the post, there was a link to the source material. As this post was only an overview of the subject, the link took me here to a true treasure trove of self-righteous, thought-smelling, up-their-own-ass conspiracy nuttery. To start, I gotta say, look at that dude. Just reeks of pretension. The description is even worse. Here, you will find information not available anywhere else. If you want answers, you might be able to find them here. This is my blog. It is opinion-driven. Enjoy. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this. The post has a preface, for some reason, that waxes as poetic about the journey Metallic Man is going to take us on. Like every good bit of pseudoscience, it starts with a quote mine. A doctor said it, so it must be important. So that you know, I'm going to read an excerpt here and there from this post so you can feel the smug going on. Here's an example. We like to believe that we are at the top of the food chain. We like to believe that we are in full control of technology, and we have the power and dominion over this planet. That is wrong. We have no power. We know very little. And we know jack shit about the history of this planet. In fact, we actually know very little of the planet's past and whom actually owns the planet that we reside upon. Yet, the evidence of the real owners of the planet are everywhere. We need just search for the evidence and study it with an open mind. Comedy gold. Alright, alright. On to the meat of the story. Metallic Man claims to have found strange things on the ocean floor near the Mariana Trench. Namely, what he describes as extensive geologic mining activity by large, read huge, vehicles on the Lapu Lapu Ridge near the Saipan Islands. The lat long of these supposed anomalies is around 16 degrees north, 147 degrees east. He describes the discovery of these tracks with as much word salad as possible. These constructions were discovered as a natural bout of investigative journalism. Indeed, it is characteristic of obtaining supportive documentation for my own contentions. Christ, guy. Oddly, Metallic Man quotes some random ass YouTuber claiming that these tracks are tectonic fissures. This is then followed up with some apocalyptic language and a nod towards science keeping the truth hidden. He even graces us with his definition of scientific statism. Quote, A concentration of a set scientific theory in the hands of a closed elite group of people. Often, they have direct lines to a highly centralized government. To alter or change that theory, to revise it, to meet new discoveries, or data often require government-derived politics and peer group approvals. Apparently he doesn't know how to use commas. I don't fucking know. Next, Metallic Man does a not half bad job of discussing tensors and ideas behind structural geology. He is attempting to disprove the idea that these tracks are in fact tectonic fissures, and does again a not half bad job of it. I don't know why this one random YouTube comment stuck in his craw so hard, but his argument is correct. 
these lines that appear to be on the ocean floor are most likely not tectonic in origin. Good on you. This is followed by an attempt to analyze track patterns. Metallic Man notes that the tracks have some rationale to them, following straight lines, 90, 100 degree turns, etc. Then things get bizarre. The tracks are only on the seafloor and do not go through islands. So Metallic Man thinks the machine that made the tracks, quote, has the ability to go through mountains. This is very interesting. Does it actually go through the mountain, or does it dematerialize before it and rematerialize after it? It seems that it actually went through the mountain and the tunnel has since collapsed, leaving a shallows and separation on one island into two. Note that the tracks are also different. The tracks start to narrow down like an arrow. This is suggestive of a process that is unknown to us. You just blew my mind. Metallic Man proceeds with more pictures of the tracks turning and weaving along before making the claim that this is obvious mining of the Lapu Lapu Ridge around Saipan. The claim that these tracks are mining related appears to be exclusively that they are forming squares. If you were looking for a more in-depth argument for mining, you're not going to find one here. I'm as surprised as you are. Squares is the best Metallic Man can offer. If you would like more out of your argument than squares, you must obviously be a government stooge, a member of a status cabal. That's not how any of this works. At this point, you're probably wondering, what could have caused all these trails at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean? Well, have no fear, Metallic Man has that solved for you as well. Quote, A large object has been observed crawling along the undersea surface at depth of over 3,000 feet off the California coast. Unlike the official explanation for the Lapu Lapu Ridge mining operations, this movement is more organic and seemingly random. The object, which observers say looks man-made rather than natural, is estimated to measure more than 2.86 miles in diameter. It is a dome-shaped structure as it must be to sustain the enormous pressures on the ocean floor, it moves along the floor and displaces dirt and debris as it moves. These orbs, as Metallic Man likes to call them, appear around the tracks, but don't always follow them. Yet somehow, quote, there is no question that it is moving about and leaving tracks. He even found a parked one. How convenient. Finally, Metallic Man has a few takeaways for us. Quote, There are mysteries that exist under the ocean. Not everything can be explained away as normal geologic processes. There are huge, mobile constructions that can move about under intense water pressure. They create paths that appear to be searching or looking for something. Truly riveting and groundbreaking observations. Metallic Man does note that a influencer suggests that they are artifacts of sonar scanning called, fa called phase shadowing. However, Metallic Man brushes this idea aside due to, I shit you not, the roving orb phenomenon, the tracks going under Saipan, and crisp right angles. We end on a Q&A section for some reason, where he says he doesn't know anything about the tracks or the orb, but... Quote, someone or something thinks that Lapu Lapu Ridge holds some valuable items or minerals. They have devoted time, obviously, and effort, certainly, to mine these elements. Well, that was a fun trip. Welcome to Pillow World, Bry. Let me get up and greet you. My first response to amazing claims such as this, are to verify. So, I opened Google Earth, went to the coordinates, and lo and behold, there were tracks. Cool, this is not completely fictitious. My next move 
was to find corroborating evidence. Google Earth is not the only resource available to look at topographic data. There is a plethora of options, from powerful GIS software to free applications, so I searched them out. If these tracks showed up on multiple scans of the ocean floor, that would be an interesting development. I chose to focus on a specific spot, one that would be easily identifiable. I landed at 146 degrees, 19 minutes, 47 seconds east, and 18 degrees, 6 minutes, 36 seconds north, a cute little track that is directly east of Pagan. Its shape is distinct enough and is easy to find on the maps. My next stop was Noah's website for the bathymetric maps. I loaded up some 2019 data and the tracks kind of appeared. Not nearly as in-depth, but this data was perhaps more raw. My next thought was to head to the source, so I seeked out the GEBCO map. This is the authoritative chart of the ocean. Again here, the tracks kind of appeared, maybe? It looked like both Google Earth and NOAA took their seafloor data from the GEBCO. So I had found the source, but I wanted to look deeper. Luckily for me, there are other methods of gaining topographic data. A group called Earthbyte is busy creating interactive map models of the Earth using many techniques, including gravity surveys. This data did not appear to produce the same results. The grav survey reconstruction may appear wonky, but if you play with it, you will find it easy to use and, well, true, true kind of fun. Namely, I was unable to find any tracks with the gravity data set survey. Now I have an issue. Why does the GEBCO data set contain the tracks, but the gravity data set not? This led me to a composite map that the GEBCO is creating for their new Seabed 2030 project. This application was interesting because it had changeable layers. Among the layers was a layer that was all tracks. This is weird, okay. The story started to come together when I overlaid ship tracks. These lines detail the path the boats took while scanning the ocean floor. The boat paths lined up almost perfectly with the tracks that Metallic Man thought were evidence of deep sea mining. They were not some wild alien machine, they were the result of the boats. It was exactly as the influencer had said, artifacts. I even found a few articles detailing the issues with bathymetric surveys and how to fix them. There, I had done it, debunked. And there was much rejoicing. The tracks were not evidence of miles wide domes driving across the ocean floor. They were caused by the boats in the process of seafloor mapping. A good question to ask is, why are there these errors? Couldn't someone remove them? Truth be told, this probably isn't a reason to. The people that created the data Google Earth is using are now busy making new, more detailed maps. Anyone with actual knowledge on the subject will recognize these artifacts and deal with them in their own research as such. There is simply nothing of note here. The Lapool Lapool mystery has officially been solved.